All right, <clears throat> been listening to the Guardians of uh, the Galaxy Volume 2 soundtrack a lot this week, uh, but I thought that that Mr. Blue Sky song goes great with this uh, data about skydiving speeds. So the Stratus Skydive um, was an effort to use a hot air balloon to go up to the very limits of the atmosphere and then jump out in a special suit designed to protect you from the friction um, till you accelerated to the point where you passed the speed of sound, which is not possible on usual skydives because the atmosphere is too thick and the resistance of the air keeps you from ever uh, reaching that, that highest speed. So um, this is data uh, that I found from one of the practice jumps, which insanely already is reaching 170 meters per second. So just to get an idea of how fast is that in um, units that we might know, be more familiar with? 380 miles per hour. That's a practice jump. Um, on the real jump, uh, they broke uh, the sound barrier like they wanted to. So, <clears throat> crazy. All right, so uh, the, I found the data at the website of a guy who was trying to model how fast the diver should go uh, the blue curve is his model, and you can see that's just a spectacular job of modeling. It's very complicated because he's falling so far that the uh, density of the atmosphere changes um, uh, greatly, uh, which affects then how fast you can go. And you can see he obviously got like the exact right shape. Um, so then he plays around with, you know, well, what parameters was he off with? And that's a good read. It was posted over it. Wired Magazine. Okay, so for me, I'm just wondering, kind of, so they reach that peak speak, speed, but I'm wondering, kind of, over this whole course of the jump, this is pretty close to, I think, when they popped the parachute, um, what was the average speed? <clears throat> so typically, finding the average of this would be very difficult because, with our traditional understanding of average, because we have to add up numbers, but this is a continuously changing quantity. But now we can use integrals to add up continuously changing quantities. So if you think about it, the integral is going to find kind of the area under the curve. Um, and so if we divide it by the width of the box, that uh, will give us kind of an average height. Uh, so that's the sense in which we mean the average here. Uh, the average, the mean, uh, traditionally means like what if we gave everybody the same? So that idea of taking the area under the curve and making a level rectangle, um, that very much fits the spirit of what the average means. Okay, so uh, what math technique are we going to do to do that? So I need to know this equation. Right? So the, the equation is um, uh, difficult. We could uh, look at his model and use that equation. A lot of different parameters in that. So what I did was I just looked at the graph and then tried to read it and put in points that would represent those speeds. Okay, you can see I even went just a little bit beyond. Um, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't have. So I've got those points. Now I'm going to use regression uh, to try to fit it. Uh, so this is the point where I'm just kind of playing around a lot. So this model, it doesn't have to be accurate forever. I just want it to be pretty close to um, the data that we got. So if we integrated this from 0 to 100, it would be wildly inaccurate because the skydiver is not speeding up. But so long as we only go to 65 or to 70, then we're probably okay. <clears throat> Actually, I think why I put the extra point in here was to try to make that cubic function kind of extend out to model the data better before it goes up again. Okay, so um, that's the regression curve. In Desmos, it finds this uh, parameters that we put into the function we're regressing to. And then we can use those numbers to build a function. Uh, so I went ahead and built a function that way. And then we can use that function in our integral. Uh, so here, uh, I just asked it for the integral, the area under the curve, this curve f, from 0 to 65. I get the value, 
So if I divide that by the width, I went from 0 to 65, so I'm dividing by 65, I get the average. The average speed is 123 meters per second, uh, which is, that's about two-thirds of what we had before, so eight-thirds, that's 250 miles an hour, I'm guessing. Okay. <clears throat> In Desmos, when you add a graph, it um, shows up as an item over here, so you can show and hide it. Okay, and then um, I got to wondering, could I find a better model? Uh, <clears throat> this kind of leveling out, to me, is usually exponential. So I thought, what if I tried to model it as a quadratic times an exponential? So I'm going to go turn off the, oh, those are the points, that's all right, leave on. So if we check that regression, uh, we get something that maybe that looks a lot more like what it looks like. So we've got the function over here, integrate and divide to get the average. Here we get 124.5, so not too much different. So I'm pretty confident that my choice of model didn't make too big an effect. And now we've got a good average speed for this data. All right. Um, if you have any questions about how I used uh, this Desmos sketch, or if you have questions about how to use Desmos in general, um, there's a lot of help here, and I link some in the activity for the day as well. Um, or you can ask on Piazza, or by email, or by Twitter. Um, make sure you ask the questions you've got. Okay? Anything else you can think of, let me know. Thanks.